Okay, I'm here with director Sean Hogan, director of The Devil's Business. No stranger to Fright Fest, of course. You uh, were the writer on Isle of Dogs last year, and then no, at talk Glasgow, about that. <laughs> one of the directors of Little Deaths. So it must be nice being here with a film that you've written and directed yourself. Uh, yeah, no, very much so. Uh, I mean, I've been coming to Fright Fest for years as a fan anyway, so the, the, you know, the time, first time I screened here with anything was great. It's like, oh, now, you know, it's the whole other side of things. So it's, it's, it's great to be here, but like, as you say, coming back with my own film um, is, you know, it's a real pleasure. It's, you know, honour to be here. I'm really happy they took it. Mm. So just tell us a little about the production. It seems to sort of appear out of nowhere. It's a very speedy shoot, I believe. Yeah, essentially what happened was is we shot it about a year ago. Um, we were in post-production on Little Death at that point, um, which got delayed. And so rather than sitting around twiddling my thumbs, um, me and uh, Jennifer, the producer, we mm -hmm. said, and I had the script kind of ready to go, she right. said, well, look, why don't we just go and make it? Let's just scrape together some money and go and do it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of essentially what we did. It was sort of a reaction to the, bo the, the couple of films that we'd both done previously, and we wanted to do something where we had no interference, you mm -hmm. know, where we basically controlled it ourselves. So we kept the budget low, and we shot it very quickly. We shot it in about 10 days, and, and then essentially I went back to Little Death and finished that off, and then came back to Devil's Business, and so we've been in post-production for yeah. the first half of this year, finishing and getting that done. Yeah. And so here we are. Now, I believe this story is very loosely based or inspired by Harold Pinter's The Dumb Waiter. Is that right? Yeah, it's um, one of those sort of weird drunken ideas that pop into my head sometimes. I don't know. I was, at, I was actually I was out drinking with, with Jen, the producer, and another director friend of mine, and we were talking about the idea of doing some, some quick, low-budget shoots. Mm. But at that stage, I didn't really have an idea, and literally just had a couple of pints, and all of a sudden it popped into my head. was like, you could do a horror version of The Dumb Waiter. And I still, you know, it's just one of those weird things that happens, and I don't know why I ever thought it was a good idea and why it mm. occurred to me, but, you know, and then I, I came back to the table, and I was like, guys, I've got it. I know what I'm doing, and you know, and it was it actually came together very easily. It was one of the easiest scripts I've ever written. It just right. kind of it was one of those times where the characters take over and they start telling the story for you, and it was just yeah. like just kind of gushed out of me, and there it was. And I was like, okay. And Jen read it, and she was like, I love it. Let's do it. So yeah, very simple in that regard. Mm -hmm. Now your work today is all very much set in the real world. It's all kind of psychological. Is Devil's Business the same kind of film? Yeah, I, I think so. Devil's Business is it's it's a bit of a hybrid in a way. It starts off more kind of like a film noir sort of thing. Okay. So it's slightly more kind of crime based to begin with and then gets darker and weirder as it goes along. Right. So it's kind of less maybe less slightly less set in the everyday, but I still think it has that certain kind of hopefully certain reality to it because that's kind of what, what I like to do, you Yeah. Know? And you just talk about the the cast that you're working with on this one. Um, well, um, Billy Clark, who plays the main role, Pinner, um, you know, again, when I, when I sat down to write it, I had no one in mind particularly. It was just like, let's just find the best people we can for it. Mm. Um, so we held some, some auditions, and I think Billy was the first person that came in, and he sat down and read, and I loved him immediately. I just thought he was fantastic. Um, there was just something about his, his face and, and everything about him. I just thought he was great. And so, and he left, and I turned around to Jen, and I said, um, he's wonderful, and Jen's like, well, you know, we do have other people to read. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, of course, you know, no disrespect, I will absolutely sit down and read the other people, but he was great, and so we, we read all the others, and some, you know, people gave some very good readings. And then, so, we finished the day, and Jen turned around, and she was like, so, and I was like, Billy, you know, um, no one, no one, no one um, outdid him, so, mm -hmm. and he's fantastic in it, he has a... A very tough scene where basically it's a five-page monologue, mm -hmm. um, and so um, when he read the script, he was like, "Yeah, I love it. I want to do it," but a bit scared of that monologue. And I'm like, "All right, well, look, we'll push it as late in the shoot as we can, so to give you time with it." And um, so we kind of did it towards the end, the last couple of days. And uh, so we got to the day, and I was like, "How are you, Billy?" With it, he's like, oh, "Well, you know, I'll do, I'll do the best I can, but we are going to do shoot coverage and everything, aren't we?" He's like, "Yeah, don't worry, you know, it's not going to be like a one-take deal or anything. We'll shoot it several times, and we'll get the best stuff." And so he went for the first take, and he just like nailed it, bang, one take. I mean, we we did do more, but he he went straight through on the first take and just sailed through it. And so it was like, "Wow," you know, and everyone sort of like burst into applause at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Billy's great, and then there's um, um, Jack Gordon who plays the other, his his partner in crime, as it mm -hmm. were, and. Um, 
It's also in panic button. Also in panic button, which is playing now, so I'm not seeing it, but uh, unfortunately. But um, Jax Ray, I think, and Jack was in Heartless, which screened here a couple of yeah. years ago, and in Fish Tank. I think Jack's a real up and comer, and we were we were lucky to get him. Mm. Um, and he just came into the audition, and because there's such a when you see the film, their two characters, there's such a contrast between them. Billy's very sort of stoic in it, and Jack's the kind of like funny energetic yeah. one uh, and they, I think the partnership works really well and Jack came into the audition he was just like that immediately he was a ball of energy when he came in he wouldn't sit down and he was just like yeah. and again it was just kind of like you're great I you know I don't really need to look any further yeah and he's he's funny because he kind of got very method about it um, because we were it was shot in in 10 days in one location and so we were all kind of cooped up together for 10 days and everyone yeah. was like, some of us were staying on location, some of them were staying nearby, but we, it was very much kind of like a family atmosphere and we were all, you know, would sit down for a couple of beers at the end of the night and mm. all this sort of thing. And Jack would be, would be telling us all these stories about his background, which, you know, kind of seemed to be informing his character in a lot of ways. And then after the shoot, we, uh, Jen spoke to Jack's agent about it and his agent was like, that's all nonsense, Jack's just making that up because he's just staying in character. It's nothing, you know, mm. Jack's actually like a, a nice, well-to-do middle-class boy. None of that stuff he's, yeah. he's telling you. So, uh, but well, you know, what the hey, it worked for his performance. Excellent. Now, aside from The Devil's Business, you've also done one of the specially commissioned short films for this year's festival. Just talk a little about uh, the production on that, because you did The Thing, of course. Yep. Um, well, again, it was, it was a really fun thing to do. Um, it's, so essentially, again, um, Jennifer, my producing partner, she she put them together, put the money together, and we spoke to Frightfest about it. And originally, mm. I think Carpenter was going to come over and be the guest of honour, so... Right. You know, we said, look, why don't we all just do Carpenter homages and that they'll be great fun and Fright Fest, we like, yeah, brilliant. And then obviously, sadly, he couldn't make it, but we were already committed to it by that stage. Uh, luckily, I was there at the beginning, so <laughs> I got in first. I was like, right, right I'm having the thing. Um, uh, that one is kind of like, how do you do the thing when, you know, without, without, you know, an Antarctic location or anything like that? So I kind of had to figure out a take on it. But once I had that... Um, I was like, okay, yeah, great. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to do. And, yeah. you know, I got Jack and Billy back for it. Um, and then uh, Daniel Brocklebank, who's, who was in Little Death, but yeah. not in my episode, um, but was great to work with as well. And it was just, yeah, it was, I mean, the thing was a massive movie for me when I was growing up. So just being able to pay tribute to that mm. and just sort of play in that sandbox for a while was just a lot of fun to do. And it was... I say it was really pleasurable. Sometimes filmmaking could be a nightmare and you have really bad days, but that shoot was just, it was just fun. We just, you know, shot the bulk of it in a day, just sat down and, and, and bashed through it and then went and shot some exterior locations the next day. And it was just really pleasurable and, and you know, sort of reminds you why, why it's good, to, why it's fun to do this. Mm. Now you mentioned very briefly Little Deaths, which of course uh, showed at Glasgow earlier in the year and had some excellent reactions at South by Southwest. Um, what's the latest with that? Is it going to get a release in the UK? Um, it's starting to creep out now. There were some legal issues with it, which I won't go into for you know fear of foaming at the mouth and pulling my hair out. But that's all been settled now, so it is starting to come out. It's definitely coming out in the US, and I've seen... I've seen um, artwork for the French release, and so I know it's coming out in several countries. I'm still not 100% sure what's going on with the UK yet, right. but I am, I'm sure it will come out with one company or another, hopefully, you know, in the very near future. And um, kind of what's next with you? Are you just working with Devil's Business? Have you got other festivals lined up, or are you working on other film projects? We're, we're doing a few more festivals with Devil's Business. Uh, we've just been confirmed for Fantastic Fest, and um, we're playing in Lund and uh, also Italy uh, and a few other places possibly. So, so there's definitely that side of things. Yeah. Um, but I have two other scripts um, with Jen that we're very keen to get cracking on and hoping that one of them will go towards the end of this year or early next year called The Girl in the Mirror, which is a more sort of psychological horror type thing. It's mm. a very much a kind of Polanski, yeah, sort of repulsion type weirdness, um, which which I'm really looking forward to doing. And we've got one of the actresses from Little Death coming back to do oh. that. Um, and really excited about that. So yeah, hopefully that will, uh, we can get cracking again and keep the momentum up. Excellent, great. Sean Hogan, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much.